grey with white trim. Michael Chamu in the red. No touch of gloves and a heavy leg kick to start things off from the Jaguar. He, yeah. did, he did give an assurance down in the run-up to this one that the judges would be able to put their pens down, take this fight off, hit the concession stand. Yeah, I've heard from multiple people, watch out for this guy. And it's not often that you get that. It's something quite exciting. And, you know, the guy just has a, a walked in the cage with such confidence you can feel maybe it's something special. Yeah, he's backing KD up against the cage already. Looking to go to work early on that lead leg, but you get the sense that it's just sending up something big upstairs. Nice kick to the body. Oh, that was a big shot, though. Wow. Chamu gets caught. Samir Kaney looking to pounce here. You know, beautifully done, taking advantage of that. Of that. And Samir finding himself in side control now. The question is, how hurt is Michael? You know, is this uh, something where you want to look to continue the strike and potentially finish the fight from here? Is he going to look to pass to a stronger position and work from there? Nice short elbow there from KD. Make no mistake, he's not here to make up the numbers. He's here to take the momentum of Charmu and steal some of that hype for himself. Well, that's it. You know, sometimes it could be a huge advantage to actually be going against someone who's really highly touted, who's someone who's carrying a bit of hype behind them, because you feel like there's less pressure. You feel like there's more the gain from getting that win because you're, you know, derailing the hype train potentially. Yeah, and, and that was that left hand we talked about during the walkout as well. He loves to throw that left hand, and he's certainly got a bit of pop on it because that really stopped Chamu dead in his tracks. So trying to take the back position now, he looks quite high on the upper body, which means that you have less control over the hips. But, you know, so far positioning-wise, he's doing a great job of getting his hips right behind his opponent. So now he should be able to slide, or he's going to try and slide some of these hooks in. One hook is in. Michael's got to really try and use the floor, use the fence to stop his opponent from being able to get square on his back because... You know, when <laughs> the, the rear naked choke is the strong, we've seen it already today, the rear naked choke is the strongest position in grappling and especially in MMA where you can strike as well. That is the position where you want to get to. Your opponent has no offense to attack you and you can put all of the damage with strikes or with attacks. You can lock up the body and you can look to force that arm underneath the neck. So this is a very, very strong position for, for Samir right now. He's trying to take control of that wrist and what you can do when you have that underhook and wrist control is you can use that to manipulate the upper body to force the opponent to give you that space with the hip he's got both hooks in now expect if he can roll onto his back you can see how he's trying to roll onto his back but Michael doing a great job of trying to shrug him off the top if Samir can roll to his back he's going to switch those hooks into a body triangle where he can really secure the position you know Samir looking very dominant right now Michael doing everything he needs to be doing a risky maneuver here is he underhooks could have found himself inside a triangle but but uh, Samir does a great job of re-establishing a, a dominant position here. So far, very, very good first round for Samir Kade. Yeah, absolutely. This is ex exactly what he would have wished for going into this one. Especially, Dan, as you said, you know, you're going in against the guy who's got a bit of height behind him and a lot of people talking about this guy. You pop him with a big shot and put him down yeah. that early. It's got to send the confidence sky high for Samir Kade. Yeah, and someone who's been so dominant so far in their MMA career, uh, you know, like you're saying, a, a lot of fights that haven't counted on his professional record, but essentially were professional fights, um, you know, it, it's very likely he hasn't found himself in such a bad position. So it's interesting to watch sort of what Michael's doing off of his back, looking to defend some of these grappling exchanges. You know, he's doing the right thing. He's trying the frame on the neck, but then, you know, reaching over with that right arm. This is a bad position. It looks like he's almost under a crucifix here. A very strong position to strike from, using the fence really intelligently to try, and, because it's so difficult for you to move when you have both of those arm pin. But Samir just doing a great job of controlling his opponent. Great work here from Samir Kady. Really putting points on the board with those short elbows and punches. He's he's still kind of got that crucifix, and yeah. I believe he's looking for yeah, the arm on the other side now. He's looking now. for an Americana. This is something that you can get from the crucifix position, and it's strong. It's a strong position here, but the problem with the Americana is you must control the body as well. And oh my oh, God, he's up! Oh, Chamu's wow. up, and Chamu's smelling blood here. 
Oh, they are trading. Wow, he looked re Samir looked really hot from that. I wouldn't throw a big shot like that and a high energy shot. He's trying to survive this first round now. Wow, what a comeback. Oh my god. Huge left hand from Michael Chomu. Whoa! Oh, and a throw there. Wow. That, that was crazy. I mean, they scrambled back to the feet. Uh, Michael threw a shot, it, it barely looked like it touched him, but you know, everyone talks about the power that he has, and Samir looked really, really hurt, and then he looked knackered, he's on the floor here, he looks so unbelievably tired, I, can, I can't tell whether he's really, really tired from all of those grappling exchanges, or whether he is uh, a little bit rock still. And I believe, I believe there's some ice actually come out of the bag, I don't think it was done intentionally, but... They're obviously going to have to get that out of the cage. But as, as you say, Dan, Samir Kady looking absolutely exhausted here. I now, think... something we have to mention in the other corner as well is that Michael Chalmu, uh, he had a bloody nose, but he's also cut around the eye as well. John Tandy, our cutman there, has done some great work. He looks like that's closed up. But, but that's something to, uh, to keep an eye on as the second round goes on. Michael looks OK. Samir looks exhausted. Exhausted. You know, this is going to be really, really interesting how the first 30 seconds of this round start. <laughs> well, Katie immediately coming out, taking centre of the cage. And I wonder whether we're going to see Samir shoot a takedown, possibly. You know, he had so much success on the grap uh, with the grappling in that first round. But, of course, how he got there the first round was with, uh, with, with from the striking. Oh, nice leg kick and a one-two there from Chamu, it's Chamu looking for a takedown here. So this is going to be interesting now, let's see the other side. Oh, big shots from Chamu up against the cage, needs to be a little bit cleaner with those. He's going to be careful chasing this man as well because he walked onto a shot in the first round, doesn't want to do that in the second as well. Right. Chamu does have his mouth open in this second round, the, the nose was bloody in the first, so whether it's just because he's tired or whether he's struggling to breathe through the nose, but it's, it's never advisable unless you absolutely don't have a choice to breathe with your mouth open, especially this early in the fight. Yes, yeah, Samir looking for a takedown now. He's got those hands connected behind the legs here. Another takedown that looks like there's a bit of a front headlock, but the position doesn't look great, to be honest. Samir's going to look to try and pass the side control here, a much stronger position. Uh, you know, the question is now, are we going to see a, a similar four minutes that we saw in the, the last round? Are we going to see that control from Samir with uh, Michael on the bottom here? You know, he's just not very active. He's very reactive off of his back. He's not really doing a lot of the correct defensive stuff. And it looks like he relies on a lot on, it, a lot of, on his physicality to escape a lot of the bad positions he found himself in. And uh, usually that would mean that you're going to really exhaust yourself. But Samir did look like the, certainly looked the more tired of the two. I'm not sure if that was to do with the barrage that he found at the end of that first round. Yeah, there is a bit of a, a movement going on in terms of how rounds are scored at the moment as well. People will have heard the terms damage, dominance and duration. And you, you kind of need two out of the three. But it's now much more focused on damage. And that's exactly what Samir Kady's doing here. Yeah, yeah, really, really nice. This is a very strong position. Michael has to be very careful. He needs to be moving. Can you see the far side control? He's controlling on the far side. He's controlling the far side arm. And what this does, not only it takes away one of your opponent's arms to defend the strikes with, but it also has complete control over the upper body. So you can't turn in. You, you can't turn in because the weight's on top of you. You can't turn away because the control on the wrist. This is a very, very strong controlling position specifically to strike from if he wanted to at this point you see all of that rotational torque in the upper body if he wanted to he could free the half guard but i don't think he's going to need to because the referee having a very very close look of whether there's any intelligent defense here well that's that's exactly it dan these aren't crushing shots but nothing's happening and the referee has seen enough michael charm is simply not defending those shots samir katie stops him by TKO in the second round. And he did a great job to come back from being badly hurt and seemingly exhausted at the end of the first. I was very, very worried for him, watching him sitting on the ground, heavy breathing. He did not look like he was ready to stand up and have a second round. But as soon as he was able to get the fight to the ground, it looked like the first 30 seconds or so, he started to come into it a little bit more. 
took his man to the ground and the position he got, you know, some people want to see someone get almost completely KO'd with ground and pound before it's stopped. But what you're actually looking for is can your opponent intelligently defend yourself? And when you're in such a strong position here, I think had that gone on for another 10, 20, 30 seconds, two minutes, we would have seen the exact same thing, which is just continuous damage. Well, let's have a look at the finish of this fight. And this is exactly as you say, Dan. Intelligent defense wasn't happening. Michael Chamu just taking those shots. You can't just cover up. You have to move. You have to try and fight back. And that just wasn't happening. And by that point, he wasn't even blocking the shots either. Yeah. He was just eating them. And that's only going to end one way. Referee Dan Moverheady making the right call there to step in and stop any unnecessary damage. But my goodness, I'm looking forward to seeing both these guys fight again, Dan. Let's throw it to our MC, Mr. Hal Chaplin, to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Mr. Daniel Moverheady, calls a stop to this contest after two minutes and 50 seconds of round number two, declaring your winner by way of TKO in the blue corner, Samir.